Welcome to episode 15 of Coral Ed. I'm your host, Micah Bland. Thanks so much for watching. In today's episode, we're talking about vocal exercises for mental activation. As students come to your class, they're coming from other courses, maybe where they're just doing book work, they're not really mentally engaged in the activities, but we want them to be mentally aware and really focused on what we're doing in the choral ensemble. And so these activities and these exercises are really designed to help awaken the brain and, and look at music in different ways as well. The first three suggestions here are kind of more generalized techniques. The first I mentioned briefly in episode 11, where instead of doing every half step between vocal exercises, dee 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 where there's this monotony and students just kind of start to check out. They're not really focused on the technique that you're working on anymore. Instead of doing this every half step, change it to whole steps, alternate half and whole steps. Maybe just jump around the scale. Now, I don't do this for every exercise during the rehearsal, but I might do it for one or two each day during the vocal warm-up time. And this really awakens the brain going, oh, there's something different here. The next suggestion here is simply to have them audiate something. If you're singing, I love to sing, say, all right, now audiate love, I to sing. They have to really think about what they're doing instead of, again, going through the motions. The third is very common for many teachers to implement and it's imagery that we are awakening the brain by using imagery. So you might say something like, imagine that you are floating on a cloud or whatever it may be. And we're awakening the brain in that way. Some very specific suggestions here of activities that you can use. Uh, the first is one of my favorites uh, and it's, I call it continuous solfege. One very common activity, let's kind of take a moment here to set this up of what this activity is. One common activity is a teacher showing three hand signs, one beat each, then a beat of rest, and then the students sing those three hand signs. Do, re, mi. The teacher then goes on to the next three. Students sing. Mi, fa, so. And in this activity, there is a pause where the teacher shows it, students sing, teacher shows it, students sing. In this activity that I'm going to present here now, which is continuous, it's continuously showing hand signs as the students sing. It might be a little confusing, but what happens is as the teacher shows the first three hand signs, the students would then begin to sing, but there is no pause. The teacher continues on to the next three hand signs so the student has to think about and audiate the future notes as they're currently singing the notes that were just shown. It becomes a little difficult, right? But this is really important in the sight reading process. So we want students to look ahead in the music, and not just focus on the next note or the note that they're on, that we're looking at the next three notes ahead of in the music. So how does this work? I'm going to demonstrate. I'll be the student as the singer. What I'm singing is the students. What I am showing is the teacher. All right, so it goes like this. Do, re, mi, mi, fa, so, so, mi, do. No, you're audio and video wasn't delayed. No, there's no delay here. That's how it works. You are showing three hand signs ahead of what they are singing. And it's a continuous movement. Really wakes up the brain. They really have to pay attention and focus. The next activity uh, is another difficult activity for students. And I call it reverse solfege. 
that instead of singing the solfege or showing the hand signs, I sing a neutral syllable as the teacher, the leader. I might sing, here's do, da, da, da. And the students sing back the solfege. Do, re, mi. This gets really difficult really fast. And surprisingly, the most difficult one is da, 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 do, mi, fa. They really struggle with that one, especially early on, even college students. They find it difficult, but it really awakens the brain and makes them think about solfege and intervals in a different way. That we're not just teaching one direction, all right, here's the interval on solfege, sing it on solfege, all right, here's what it looks like on the page, but we're going reverse in a way and saying, here's the interval, what is the solfege? Great for learning intervals, great for kind of further digging in deep into these intervallic relationships. I can't say that word for some reason. Now on these last two uh, activities I just mentioned, you this is great also to have student-led, that the, a student can lead the reverse solfege or the continuous solfege. Of course, they like to make it very difficult. You know, da da da. You know, try to sing those solfege solos. I make it a rule that if you make it too difficult, I'm going to ask you to sing it yourself and and sing what those intervals were. Um, so they may have to make it more acceptable to the whole general uh, student body. There. Talking about intervals, some teachers like to have students sing on a neutral syllable but sing up a major second, down a minor third, up a perfect fourth, and so forth. Uh, I don't use this activity as much in my teaching, but perhaps you as the teacher, one of your goals as part of your teacher identity is to have students understand those intervals and not just solfege. Great activity to use. I would start with you know smaller steps, half step, whole step, and using more of those, and then move up to adding adding intervals gradually, increasing in size. Another very challenging activity for mental activation uh, was, I'm pretty sure, developed by Robert Shaw, or at least used by Robert Shaw, and that is changing the pitch a half step over a set number of beats, 12 beats, 16 beats, whatever it may be. And this can be done by sustaining it or by pulsating the note. What I would do to kind of introduce introduce this to your ensemble is first have them sing that half step. Then gradually slide. as slow as they can make it, so they feel every little microtone in that half step. And then the activity goes like this, over a set number of beats, let's say 12, we're going to move from one note to the next. Here's the first note, I'm going to this note. Oops, see I'm not very good at it. I don't know how many beats that was. Better demonstration. Very difficult, even for me, right? So uh, I would start by doing the slide. Fewer beats to change. Start with four, five, or six. Uh, you'll hear a pretty clear jump up to the half step usually, uh, very abruptly. I try to even that out. Uh, this is not a kind of one-time exercise. They're not going to get it the first time. They're not going to get it fifth, sixth, seventh time probably. So if, if that is an interest to you and, and being aware of all those different tuning levels, which is very important, this is more for an advanced ensemble. It's a great exercise to wake up the brain. 
The last kind of area of mental activation exercise that I use, I sadly won't be, uh, be talking about today. Uh, they are exercises for improvisation. Uh, the reason being that that will be a future episode much later on, on creativity in composition and improvisation. And so uh, I'm saving that for later, sadly, but consider some improvisatory exercises that maybe you are familiar with or that uh, you create yourself. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you would take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button, share about this YouTube channel with a friend, post it on Facebook, post one of these videos. I would greatly appreciate it. And also maybe you have some thoughts as to some mental activation activities that you enjoy. Feel free to share a comment and share it with myself and with all our viewers. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you continue, continue to inspire the future leaders of our world through this wonderful gift we call music. Thanks.